Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Mr. Gaughan? Here. Mr. McGaugh? Here. Uh, let the minutes reflect that uh, Mr. Loscombe did call and say that he was not feeling well and will not be at the meeting this evening. Uh, dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held January 22nd, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting held February 26th, 2000, 2014. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Any clerk's notes? No, Mr. McGough. Uh, do any council members have announcements at this time? Just one, um, and this is a repeat announcement. Next week in council chambers at 530, Scranton City Council will be having a public caucus on Senate Bill 76, property tax reform. Um, we encourage everyone to attend and uh, listen to, to the speakers um, give their presentation on Senate Bill 76. Thank you. Anyone else? A uh, couple of uh, announcements. First of all, the, there will be a public hearing conducted by um, DCED this dealing with the grant proposal that was sent uh, to DCED that was approved by council. This hearing will be on March 17th at 1.30 in Scranton it, in the uh, council chambers. That's a public hearing on the grant proposal March 17th um, at 1.30 in council chambers. Uh, the other things, uh, two things. First of all, the St. Patrick's Day Parade uh, is coming quickly. It will be held on March 15th, that's the Saturday before St. Patrick's Day um, and encourage encourage people to attend. It's a great event. And the other one, uh, the first the first Scranton Half Marathon will be held on April 6th. Um, it's run entirely through the city of Scranton. There are 2000, well, they, they maxed out at 2,500 runners for the race. Uh, I know they are still looking for volunteers. Um, if anyone would like to participate as a volunteer, um, you know, you can contact me. I can put you in touch with uh, the people that are running the um, half marathon or I'm sure if you went to the Scranton Running Company um, that they too could put you in touch with um, people if, you're, if you wish to volunteer. But it looks like it's gonna be a great event for the city. Uh, again, uh, that's on April 6th. And that's all I have. Fourth order, citizens participation. Mr. Hetman. Good evening, Council. Gerard Hetman from Lackawanna County's Community Relations Department. Uh, to begin this evening, my thanks for accommodating me a little bit later in the month than I normally speak. Due to the weather, as I'm sure we've all had changes in our schedules, personal and professional, uh, we've had to change a couple things this month in order to try to accommodate our services as best we can to all the municipalities in Lackawanna County. So great to see you again, even if it's a little bit later than normal. Uh, to begin this evening, just as a reminder, all of the council members and also the mayor should have received a copy of this letter in the mail, but we would just like to remind you of the Lackawanna County Municipal Arts and Culture Grant Program, which is operational again for the 2014 calendar year. And the Municipal Arts and Culture Grants provide up to $500 worth of funding to all 40 municipal governments in Lackawanna County for them to provide arts and culture programming during the calendar year for their communities. Uh, it's a very simple process to apply for. We have the letters, the information here in the letter, and it should also be in the letter you received. And we encourage the city to apply. Uh, you have, you've got the whole calendar year to submit an application. 
the department just asked that you apply approximately 30 days before any programming that the city plans to do in order to allow time for all the paperwork and the check to process. But it's a great program with funds available to benefit the community, and we'd love to see the city of Scranton apply for something during the 2014 calendar year. And uh, if you need more information about it, please feel free to ask me after the meeting or contact me. Uh, the second item uh, for all the weather bugs out there, the National Weather Service Office in Binghamton, New York, will offer a free basic Skywarn training class. Uh, this is for the National Weather Service spotter program that they can activate in the event of a severe weather incident. <laughs> and uh, we'll obviously stay inside in warm weather, in adverse weather, but there's some folks that like to be out there watching and looking. And this is a training course designed to provide them with the skills to do that when severe weather hits, and that way they can be of an asset to the National Weather Service. Uh, the program takes place Wednesday, March 5th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Lackawanna County 911 Center in Jessup. The class is for beginners or anyone that has a general interest in weather. No previous experience or training is required, and there is no cost involved to attend the program. Uh, in order to RSVP, which they ask that you register in advance, uh, feel free to contact the National Weather Service at Binghamton at area code 607-729-1597, extension 4. Or you can also email bgm.skywarn at noaa.gov. I know the National Weather Service also has Facebook and Twitter accounts for all of their agencies across the country, so if you just look up National Weather Service Binghamton, Facebook or Twitter, you can also find information on the program. Uh, and last but not least, the county's Area Agency on Aging has asked us to pass along details of some of the programs and services that they can offer funding assistance for for qualified individuals in Lackawanna County with regards to in-home care options. Uh, this includes areas that include home delivered meals, adult daycare, in-home personal care, personal emergency response systems, something similar to a life alert or an alarm that would send a signal if someone was injured or disabled, and then also chore services, such as non-medical in-home care. Uh, to qualify for these options, you must present a need and be financially eligible. Some cases may qualify for partial eligibility. For more information, contact the Lackawanna County Area Agency on Aging at 570-963-6740 or first referral system at 570-961. One, two, three, four. Uh, that's all we have for this month. Uh, thank you, as always, members of council. Thank you, Mr. Hatton. Thank you. Um, uh, prior to next speaker, I, I just did want to mention one thing. Uh, on the agenda, item 6A, for procedural um, reasons, item 6A is going to be tabled this evening. Uh, due to the need for a public hearing and some changes that are needed in the legislation. So if there was anyone speaking to 6A, it will, there will be a motion to table it. And that is all, thank you. Uh, Mr. Spindler? Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, I couldn't make it last week. I want to start off by saying my thoughts and prayers are with the family of Bill Connell. I met Bill about eight years ago, working several different political campaigns together. Got to know him very well. Got to be close friends with Bill. We just worked together, hoping to get Mary Courtright elected. And uh, I'm going to miss him dearly. For a, for a person who was a, a non-politician, who was a wonderful gentleman as was evidenced i heard his uh his viewing which unfortunately i couldn't attend i had to work i heard it was like there was a line for three and a half hours outside including senators casey and and uh blake so that's that's a testament to, to bill connell what kind of gentleman he was and i'm gonna miss him dearly rest in peace buddy uh okay moving on uh, Councilman Wexler, last meeting I attended, I asked you what the status was with uh, trying to get money to pay off the court award to the firemen and policemen, and you said I should call the business administrator or the mayor. Well, the previous finance chair, I asked him that same question, and he had answers for me whenever I asked him. The last time I asked him, he had an answer right away. He said, well, we're working with Amalgamated Bank, and uh, and so I forget what else he said, but he had an answer for me. I mean, you, 
I met you with several political parties. You asked me for your vote. And that's the answer I get that I have to call the mayor or the business administrator. I don't think that's right. Mr. Spindler, actually what I suggested is you could also contact him. That's all I said. Yeah, but I think it's your duty to, to work for the taxpayers. We elected you. And I, 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 I agree with you, and I, I hope I am you're going to do that. a better job of working for the taxpayers. And I am doing that. I, I hope so. Do you have any answer on that question? No, I do not. Okay. Well, I can tell you this. I am working with Mr. Balzoni on a regular basis. I am communicating with, with the mayor. I am communicating with Mr. Balzoni, as I said, and the information travels back and forth. Is anything different? Has anything been settled? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know uh, two weeks ago the meeting was canceled because of a snowstorm and it was on Saturday. But there was a meeting before that that was also canceled. Why was that, Mr. McGough? Uh, there was a problem in posting the agenda uh, that was, and there was, since we couldn't post, since we did not post the agenda, we could not have a meeting on Thursday. And it was difficult to find an, an alternative day at that point in time. We weren't sure if we could get it done. It was in the midst of the, the last snow, the one snowstorm. And, and so it was thought that the best thing to do was simply to post or to cancel it and wait until the next week. Okay, now that snowstorm was Tuesday night. It ended Monday or Wednesday morning about nine o'clock. So I don't think there was any reason couldn't have had a meeting on Thursday. Wait, what I'm saying is you have to have the agenda posted 24 hours in advance. It wasn't. And so we could not ha legally have the meeting. Okay. All right. I want to talk about everybody's favorite subject, the potholes. <laughs> I know uh, Main Avenue is PennDOT's responsibility. I know it's, it's just a mess. I know under the railroad bridge that they were filled in this week, thank God. You can, you can barely move under that bridge. Uh, but there is one that I know is the city's responsibility. At the top of Court Street, where you go under the bridge, where the expressway goes over, I think it's a 1200 block. It's coming out of the uh, trip park development. You make a right and you go underneath. There's a hole there. You could lose a small car in that pothole. <laughs> That's how big it is. I, it's, it's unbelievable. You have to go around it. You go through it. I don't know if you'll get through. And, uh, and I understand the city just received a load of cold patch today. I saw a story on the news that they were in Southside on Cherry Street. So I hope we can get that one taken care of. Uh, when the weather breaks, I will come back with my uh, annual problem that I have with my property. I you know Mr. Rogan and Mr. McGough, you know I've come here year after year after year. But right now when the weather's so bad, nothing can be done there. But, I will be back again asking for help and see if this DPW director will be cooperative, unlike the last one. Right, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Spindler. Mrs. Frannis? Hey, Frannis, Scranton. I want to speak about the mayor for a little bit here. People in Scranton, some people, elected Bill Courtright to be the mayor. So far, I don't see anything he's doing except hiring people to do the work that he should be doing. He has a business administrator. He had a, so he went and he hired Mr. Amorosa, I believe his name is, to be a financial wizard. Uh, and then he wants to hire Ned Abrahamson as a lawyer for labor relations. Well, we always had one lawyer. Maybe they had an assistant, but they got paid a salary. They didn't get paid by the hour. So he's getting it's on the agenda for a four-year term, get paid by the hour. That could be astronomical. I think it's absolutely ludicrous. He's taking care of his friends. People have to remember, this is the same Ned Abrahamson. They had the credit and collections that find all these people, thousands of dollars. Some people lost their homes because of all this. Uh, Bill Courtright is just taking care of his friends. He has these grant coming now. He's circumventing the budget from last year. The council from last year with Janet Evans they, and Frank Joyce, they did not allow for these raises in the administration that they're asking for now. 
Bill Courtright didn't open the budget. He's doing it this way by getting a grant, which taxpayers still pay for. When did anybody that you know of ever get a $26,000 raise a year? That's, it's totally, we're in a stressed city, but Bill Courtright's making sure that all his friends and cronies are getting a raise. He's creating a position in the business administration office for $36,000. We don't need this, not when we're distressed and the taxpayers are gonna lose their homes with the taxes this year. But yet you wanted, Bill Corey wants to take care of his friends. He didn't have the guts to open the budget to do it the right way, he had to do it through council. This Dave Balzoni, this guy that's a business administrator, he's the same man that worked, same man that worked for that landmark bank that got that loan approved for 2.3 million for the parking authority, but it never came in front of council for approval. How is this even legal, this loan? And Landmark Bank is suing the city of Scranton for this money. I don't know if the city really has to pay that money back. And council, you have the power under Home Rule Charter uh, section 112 and 113 to investigate how this loan ever got approved. You have the right to do this, council, and I think you should investigate how this loan came about, how Dave Balzoni and Mayor Doherty and anybody else that's connected got this loan to go through and not have it come through council for approval. It just didn't. So I can't see where the city has to be liable for this. So I really wish that you would investigate this. Will you please consider this, since you have the power to do this? Because if we're, Bill Courtright will say, it's my friend Dave, I'll make sure that that bank gets, and you have to wonder, why did Landmark Bank let him go? Why did they let him out of his employment? I, I have to wonder about that one. Let me ask you this, I wanna ask you, Mr. Wexler, and each one of you. Mr. Wexler, why do you think it's necessary to have the caucuses in the back room? I don't mean when you're just meeting there by yourself. I mean when people like OECD or Greisinger came in last week, people like that, when somebody comes in, I'll answer the question. I'm asking Mr. Wexler. It was my decision. I, I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm asking them how do they feel about that? Why do they feel? I know you might feel that way, but I want to know how each council member feels about having the caucuses in the back room, whereas before they were always out here in the public for transparency. Mr. Wexler, why do you think it should be Would in the you back care room? For me to answer. Yes, please. No. Mr. McGough, I'd like to ask you. I, we're paying okay, him. Mr. Wexler has deferred to me because it was my decision. So he doesn't have an opinion as Excuse me. Do you want an answer or? I want an answer from Mr. Wexler, Mr. Rogan. No, no argument. I'm asking a simple question of elected officials. Okay. Why do they feel the caucuses should be in the back room where people can't see it in the public? I don't have a right to ask that question to Mr. Vaughn, yes, Mr. Rogan, and, and Mr. And Wexler? I'm, I'm prepared to answer. For them? Yes. You speak their minds. No. Then, but th th unless they all agree with decision. you. It was our joint decision to do this. Okay. So if you want an answer, I will provide it. So you could tell me how Mr. Rogan, Mr. Wexler, Mr. Laskin, and Mr. Gone feel about it? Go ahead. Tell me how each one of these feel about how they don't want it in the chamber so the people at home could see what's going on instead of in the back room. Go ahead. Traditionally, prior to the last council, mm -hmm. there were caucuses held half an hour before every meeting. That had been a time-honored tradition, I would say. When Mrs. Evans became president, for some reason, um, which was fine, she decided not to have. She wanted transparency. She, she decided to not have a council, a caucus of council. She decided we, in the four years that she was president, we did not have one when anybody caucus of council. That's not what I'm asking, Mr. McGaugh. I'm trying to explain the process that we. I know the process. I also know that okay. when anybody, I, I'm not stupid. I came to all these meetings. When anybody had anything to say during Mrs. Evans's term for four years, OECD any department head, any person that wanted business in front of council, they came out in these chambers and it was broadcast. There was complete transparency. And any time somebody didn't want to go in front of the cameras, Mrs. Evans didn't allow them. She said, if you can't come in front of the people to speak openly, then I don't want you to speak. And that's the way it should be. So basically what you're saying is you want backroom deals. So that's sure. not what I said. And it's, thank it's you, indirectly Mrs. Indirectly what you're saying, Mr. McGaugh. Thank you, Mrs. Dictatorship Francis. by you again. Thank you.
Mr. Miller? Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Uh, just like to uh, address the issue of the caucuses here. I guess it's become an issue here. I haven't been here for quite some time, but uh, apparently last week there was an issue with uh, the, the procedure of the caucuses. And you know, uh, supposedly the, the new procedure around here these days is the caucuses take place uh, in the back room. Uh, you know, I, when I did uh, become aware of that, I, I will say I was. Uh, quite you know uh, baffled by that uh, decision and uh, definitely disappointed and, and uh, discouraged by that I have here with me today a copy of the Sunshine Act I'm sure we all know what that is or you know I would certainly hope we would we're in these positions uh, basically to summarize what the Sunshine Act does is it gives the public the ability to view their government in action without you know backroom procedures smoke and mirrors um, you know a lot of what I think backroom meetings lead to are things that are kept away from the public. And yeah, we could talk about how nice it is that the public is still allowed to go back and partake in any caucus that may take place. But it just doesn't send the right signal to the people, the viewing audience, the people in the community, people that come here, to see their government basically, in other words, trying to uh, you know, prevent the public, so to speak, from partaking in you know, what goes on in government. And you know, whether we want to talk about what was traditional or not. You know, what we saw here in the previous council for four years was any public hearings or caucuses, anything that had to do with city business, always took place in this chamber. Because there was one thing that the previous council knew, real simple, it's not complex. These cameras that are all in, the, in these chambers here, they don't lie. And I think we all need to know that, that this room right here is about transparency and openness. And when we conduct business in the back room, all it does is send a mixed message that we're trying to hide something from the people, whether we are or we're not, but that's the message it sends. And I think that was probably one of the biggest mistakes this new council made was depriving the people of transparency and the open government that they're entitled to. So I would think, I would recommend that we go back to the procedure we had because it worked. It allowed the viewing audience to see what goes on here because as I said, the cameras don't lie, nothing's hidden. And if those are discouraged or afraid of the cameras, well, they don't have to come here. But nothing should take place in the back room. And if that's where we're going to go, well, then I guess we're going back to the old days of smoke and mirrors and politics and rhetoric. But let me move on. I have quite a bit here. I'd like to get into uh, the agenda this evening. Uh, I believe it's 5B in regards to uh, executing into a uh, four-year contract with uh, Abrahamson, Conaboy and Abrahamson. Just... Uh, you know, I think what we're doing here is we're just going back to playing, you know, the political crony game. That's all we're doing here. Real simple. We're playing political cronyism, favoritism, by awarding a four-year deal to Mr. Abrahams. And it's no secret, he was one of the biggest contributors, supporters, and if we can all recall, was the chairman of his transition team, talking about Mr. Courtright. And now tonight we want to approve a four-year deal. I mean, how comical can this get? And that we have the audacity to even put something like this on the agenda is just an insult to the residents of this city. You know, and we want to laugh it off and snicker and make a mockery of it. It's not. It's a joke. It's another Carl Greco deal, somebody leeching off the taxpayers, millions and millions of dollars that were squandered with Carl Greco. That's all we're going to have here with Mr. Abrahamson. It's a political deal, and it shouldn't happen, and this council shouldn't stand for it. I don't care how close you are with the mayor. We talk about cooperation. I've heard enough of the cooperation as if that's some major accomplishment. The city faces serious challenges. I'm not interested that after the meetings we can go all have a drink together. We could all go sit around the campfire and sing Kumbaya. We got problems. And we're all, wait we're all still waiting for this grand miraculous plan that the administration and that, and that the council has to save this city. So instead of turning around and patting ourselves on the back and shaking hands and oh, a boy, we get along. That's our job. We're making it as if it's some major accomplishment that we can miraculously all cooperate with department heads. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why we elect you people to do that. So instead of going prancing around and being a, you know, that's some major accomplishment, let's address the serious issues. Let's not have to bring in a consultant in from New Jersey to show us how to put two and two together. That we're so incompetent and capable, incapable of putting our own budgets together, of figuring out ways to make money for the city. It's so difficult. We need outsiders to come in and do it. 
Now we need another financial advisor. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. We truly are a laughing stock. And that's why I haven't come down here, because I see what goes on here, and it's just completely comical. And, uh, you know, I take it serious, uh, the issues, but, you know, there's just no creativity in our government, and uh, that's a real problem. And lastly, I just want to discuss, uh, the last few days I was in Cleveland, Ohio, and, uh, part, you know, taking a look at what some of the things they do in their city, you know, in the past we your, discussed your uh, the University of Scranton. If I could just have one more moment, if you don't mind, Mr. McGough. Quickly. I'd appreciate it. Uh, we talked about in the past skywalks, you know, around the university and things like that. And one of the things they have in Cleveland, all throughout the whole city, are skywalks. And you're cutting back on the pedestrian traffic, you know, when you talk about the safety and a lot of times the disregard that a lot of the pedestrians have. You alleviate that. And that's why I think we should, in, I suggest that we put an ordinance together to uh, demand or force a traffic study by the university, all the universities, that way we're not singling out just one, to do a pedestrian traffic study and see how it can definitely uh, help us in the long run by investing in skywalks. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Quinn. Ozzy Quinn, Scranton Taxpayers Association. Good evening. First, uh, I wasn't here from since January 30th, and at that meeting, you extended the discount period for the city taxes. I want to thank you on behalf of the taxpayers for that. Okay, adjusting will probably take them that long to get out of the shack <laughs> before they pay it. <laughs> the other thing is that a personal friend of mine was a, uh, one of the uh, persons appointed to the parking authority. And I know this gentleman for 40 years, and I worked with him, and I know his family, his wife, he raised a lovely family, a good man, a uh, good God-fearing man. And uh, he was uh, criticized for liens on his property. And I want to defend him because I think the man would have made a good asset to the uh, city of Scranton. Uh, third thing, I want to thank you for having the caucus with uh, Chuck Lettick from the Pennsylvania Realtors on House Bill and Senate Bill 76 because for the elimination of school property tax, Pennsylvania Taxpayers Independence Act. We've been uh, tooting that horn for a long time, and I'm glad you're meeting because of the fact it leads into the, into the situation of people losing their homes. People lose their homes because of taxation. They lose them through foreclosure, and as they lose them, as they did last Monday, through the uh, uh, judiciary sale of delinquent properties. 276 properties from the city. Uh, 162 were continued to March 24th. That's for them to come up with the money. They just got their new tax bill for 2014. God bless them, hope they can get it. 58 went into repository. When it goes into repository, it means it's put there, anybody can buy it. Let me just point out something on a repository, okay? Here's a property here that uh, it owed $15,000, $23, it's being sold for $5,000. It's being sold because they eliminate all the uh, penalties and interest. That leads me to what I've been trying to uh, address you on January 30th, and I see uh, Mr. Gawne move the needle a little bit in regards to amnesty. Uh, I think that's a very necessary thing in the city of Scranton. Uh, there's going to be another upsale, upset sale this year with another 540 properties. Uh, that would mean that well, one third of the properties in the city, uh, non-profits, uh, non-producing, non-tax producing, and with all the people delinquent, 60% of the uh, property owners are, pr are probably rowing the boat for the city of Scranton in regards to paying taxes. You know, when you have properties that uh, are, are condemned and you see them demolished using federal money, okay, 
federal money, taxpayers' money, where that money, if you had a structural engineer go out and see if that property was able to stand a rehabilitation, why demolish it? Why not sell it to a contractor for a dollar and let, and let them rehabilitate it? We, we demolish it, we left vacant lands. I come down from Gibson Street, and just tonight I happened to notice, 12 years ago I asked the mayor at that time, Mayor Doherty, for this land when I was with Happy Taft for Humanity to build a tax producing property. He says, you got it. I couldn't get it through, I couldn't get it through. That property's still vacant up there. So what I'm saying is that you gotta start looking at these properties, start looking at them, if, if they're not buildable, start talking to the people, start talking to each neighbor and try to see if each neighbor will take them. Even if, they're, even if they don't pay a tax, at least they'll get the blight out of the area. This, this demolition, this demolition money could be used, federal money could be used for, for, for police and the neighborhoods. It, it, it just shouldn't be happened. Twelve thousand dollars. Want you to put a lien on a property? So what I'm saying is the fact that if 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 you're going to what same? If you're going to have a these properties go into a repository, why not amnesty? Why not amnesty for the people? Give these people an opportunity to pay. Forget about the penalties and the interest. Give them a certain specific time to uh, to go ahead and pay their delinquency and keep the city on the tax rolls and not demolish them and cause them more blight. And Mr. Gawne, I hope that you follow up. I want to leave this papers with you, if I may approach you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. These are the repository list and the list of properties that we can get to the sale or the judiciary sale. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Mr. Jackowitz. Good evening, Scranton City Council, Amo and Ms. Reed. Uh, on February 19th, I faxed uh, 10 questions to Scranton City Council. I was wondering if we had any, any answers on the 10 questions that I faxed on the 19th of February. Uh, I have a list of the questions right here. I'll go over them. Uh, February the 1st has come and gone. What's the status on the North Scranton Junior High School building? I know we still have until the 15th of April. Uh, number two, what's the status on the Dixon Avenue project? I see it's pretty much on a standstill. Number three, what's the status on the Scranton Lace project? I see that's pretty much on a standstill. What's the status on the replacement business for Bontown at the mall? Is the mall current on its repayment of its loans? Number five, how much money did the city lose because of the snowstorm? in the downtown streets not being plowed. Should have been plowed during the evening hours. Uh, number six, what's the status of the $3 million that Hilton owns, owes the city taxpayers? Number seven, why do we continue to hire more consultants and still give appointments, appointees like the business administrator and mayor, huge pay raises when they need consultants to do the job for them? Plus, taxes were raised 56%, garbage bill raised 69%. Why has the garbage not been picked up for two weeks? The snowstorm were only one of, was, was, was a one or two day event. My garbage was finally picked up yesterday after four weeks. I would like to congratulate Mr. Vitrus, the dispatcher, who finally got a truck out to our neighborhood after four weeks. We had four weeks of garbage piled up in the, in the alley of 1400 block of Hertz Court. Unacceptable. Mr. Gone, I really hope you can get me an answer for that. You're the DPW guy? Mm -hmm. I really would like an answer and an explanation as to why that block was neglected for four weeks. Okay? Yep. Uh, number nine, what is the status on the Supreme Court award? Mr. McGough addressed that earlier, or Mr. Wexler addressed that earlier. I guess we're still at a standstill and we have no idea. And uh, it's been going on for how many years now? I think it's time somebody comes up with a plan, somebody comes up with an idea, and somebody come up with the money and let's get this off the back of the Scranton taxpayers. It's been going on for too long. We're in the year 22 now, I believe. Uh, number 10, when will the parking garages be repaired and the homeless removed from, the living, from living in the garages and other city-owned properties? This is another problem. 
I think that we have about $10 million in repairs that need to be done to those garages. Is it ever going to be done? And uh, remember, taxes were raised 56%. So uh, I think as taxpayers, since we're paying the bill, I really think that we need to get some results, and I just don't see the results. I see the same old mistakes being made over and over and over again. We're hiring the same people, the same law firms, the same attorneys, and it seems like if you're not politically connected, you're not going to get a job in this city. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're allegedly hi hiring the, the best qualified, and we're, we're giving some people pay raises, but yet we still have to go out and hire consultants. I don't understand that. If you hire, hire a consultant to help someone do their job, then all you're doing is paying more money, more taxpayers' money, uh, to get the same job done. But the job doesn't seem to be getting done because we're still distressed. We still have the same problems that we had 22 years ago, 12 years ago, or two years ago. The only difference is the problems have gotten bigger and have worsened since then. And it's time, I mean, myself, and many other people in the city are aggravated, aggravated, and they're just tired of it. We want results, okay? We've waited long enough. When are we going to get the results? I mean, I, I, people approach me all the time. I don't know why, but they do. And they ask me, I tell them, I don't know. I said, all I can do is write letters to the editor, come to city council, and try to explain my point of view to, to city council and to the residents who are listening, and hopefully people are listening. But we need results. It's not a laughing matter. I see councilmen up there snickering and laughing, and I'm not saying anybody's doing it right now, but I have seen it in the past, okay, from previous consuls. Uh, so far, the current consuls, I haven't seen it, okay? But I've seen it from, that's because I haven't been coming on a regular basis. But anyway, it's time, it's, it's time. We need answers. I would like to know why we need to hire all these consultants. Is it because the city workers are overworked? Is it because the city administrators and managers are overworked and have too big of a workload? Is it because we have incompetent people? Is it, is it, is it just because they're not doing their job? I would like answers to that question. I would like to know why we have to hire consultants. You know, why do we have to bring someone in we just get, we're giving the business administrator a pay raise, we just gave the mayor a pay raise. Why do they need consultants? If they need consultants, then they should never have gotten a pay raise. I would like answers to these questions. I really would. And I, I sent these questions to the mayor's office also. So hopefully someone one day will answer my questions. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Jackowitz. Ms. Hodewanitz. Uh, Joan Hodewanitz, city taxpayer. Uh, there are two very interesting articles in today's paper. One refers to the um, composite pension board. Board seeks state waiver on pensions. $180,000 penalty isn't expected to be forgiven. And the second one was AG, that's the attorney general. Pensions can cripple. De Pasquale calls for changes. And they're related articles. Um, I've noticed that in uh, today's minutes, uh, you received the um, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting for January 22nd. Could you tell me, please, are those meetings of the Composite Pension Board open to the public or just to city officials? Yes. They're open to the public. OK. Um, because. I'm really interested in what's going on with that board. I'm not saying that they're necessarily doing anything wrong, but I am saying that as a taxpayer, if I'm the one that's going to have to be picking up some of these penalties and interests down the road, then I'm really interested in what's happening with that board, what their reasoning is. For example, are, are they expecting to make all their future pension contributions on time, or are we looking at another year of penalty and interests? Um, what is their investment strategy? I see Mr. Hazuri is, is um, looking at a more aggressive investment strategy of 50-50 stocks and bonds. Um, 
I have this bad feeling that this is going to be one of the uh, sucking chest wounds financially that the city is going to be facing. And if that's true, this is going to be hitting me and other taxpayers in, in, in the wallet not too far down the road. Uh, one of the things I would suggest, if it's possible, is maybe it would be a good idea to have this pension board attend a public caucus here in chambers where they could explain the status of their funding, because I think they're underfunded, and um, what their way ahead is, and how they see themselves on uh, getting a handle on these pension liabilities. According to this other article, uh, the combined pension board has a deficit of something like $113.6 million. That's a lot of money, and we could be digging a deeper hole year by year. Um, so perhaps you can consider that. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is more than just a pay raise to the mayor or a pay raise to the business administrator. This is something that's going to be a major impactor on every taxpayer in the city. So for what that's worth, perhaps you can look into that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just... Uh I, I spoke and said that they were open to the public. Uh, I believe they are, uh, simply because the press is in attendance at the, the meeting, so I would assume that they must be open to the public. If, there's, if that is wrong, I will inform you. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Good evening, Dave Dobson, resident, taxpayer. Uh, last week I uh, brought a little note on the uh, sewer plant and I'd like to bring that subject up again. And on the one side it had water policy boost sprawl, but part of the water policy is, is that Thanks to our legislature in 2012, they passed, uh, passed a state law that allows the water company to bill you for a gated community luxury cul-de-sac. And you are paying three or four dollars a month currently towards their maintenance of their sewage treatment plant. And on the other side, which, I mean, I picked my lifestyle. After 25 years, the country wasn't cutting it. Why should I have to pay for a gated luxury community sewage treatment plant somewhere else? Um, and on the second side, it says don't privatize the sewer system. It was a letter to the editor. And I pointed out that the rates in Coatesville are double. They're owned by the uh, PA American Water Company. They were bought out and they pay about $900 a year. I pay about 400, give or take a few. And the reason I keep expressing this concern is uh, now this week there was an article in the Scranton Times that Dunmore is opposed to any sale of the plant and before a lot of decisions get made and assumptions get made that this is okay it's not okay with me and I intend to uh, try to get the uh, taxpayers association in on a conference with it sometime after the uh, after the elections in the spring and hopefully we could get a, an authority on the river that I have in mind um, now um, on Comcast, 10, 12 years ago, we talked about a digital divide in this country. How does a person that loses a, even a fairly good job, you're lucky if you get 250 a week, how does a person uh, such as that pay all their bills with limited unemployment available and uh, turn around and pay $176 a month 
uh, for uh, computer service. Well, the computer side and the phone is about 85 of it. And we, the digital divide keeps increasing. You cannot get a job even with, uh, you send them an email, a resume, and they send you back an email. And if you don't have an e address, you, you don't even get considered. They won't even accept a paper resume from you. So, uh, in relation to this, I don't know what could be done about it, but it's not throwing up our hands and saying so-so isn't uh, somewhere we have to start to lower the cost and if it takes everybody I know I get criticized a lot of times from the audience and at meetings uh, of, uh, of bringing up national issues but it's a small world after all it's a very small world and uh, currently, uh, Comcast is talking about buying out Time Warner, so there's going to be one provider for the whole country, and if you can't afford to pay the bill, you just won't get a job, or, or you'll, you'll get a job wherever you can walk in the front door, which is only a handful of places uh, that actually do this. And uh, I'll try to wrap it up after this I forgot my glasses so I'm not really full of it tonight but in this book the fine print David K Johnston what began as an effort in Kentucky to help a single company in Appalachia raise capital by keeping state income taxes withheld from its workers paychecks has grown to more than 2,700 companies in many states when this book was published. Now, I might add that many of these are foreign corporations, Chinese, Japanese, uh, uh, European, and uh, with all of these uh, taxes being handed out, why is anybody talking about not putting a stop to it? It's a shame. It's something I have to get out. But it's like I said, it's a small world after all. By the way, Pennsylvania is doing this. So we're talking about raising taxes for schools and everything else. And they're giving it away out the back door. Why bother? Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. You. Anyone else who wishes to speak? Andy Sprague, Citizen Scranton Fellows, Cantonians. Mr. Mr. Rogan brings up that House Bill 76 and Senate Bill 76. I was here when the state came up and gave their presentation on it. This is what you got to face. All your food will be taxed except WIC. And God knows at what percentage. That's one thing. Your state income tax will rise. Now, as a renter, you get nothing. You get hosed. They, because you got to pay for all of that and get nothing in return. Who's the biggest winners? I told this before. Businesses. As you know, you had the real estate people here. Sure, sure they plan to make a killing. They could say, you don't have to pay these taxes. Look how low it is. These are the people that are going to get something out of this bill. As far as the individual, no. I can tell you what's going to happen. Same thing that happened with the income tax. The, I'm not the income tax, your Social Security. That was supposed to be free. You're lucky now if you get it probably free. And there's so many other things that the government will just turn their back on it to get money to pay for the schools. They have no way of really doing this in a smart way. You have to start with the schools before you find a way of changing the method of funding these schools. But to sit there and ask every renter to take a hit, no, that's not America. That's the haves attacking the have-nots. Have we gotten that bad? I guess we have. So many special interest groups are out there. Thank God for Senator Blake. I believe 
he got the right idea. This, as it is written, is not a good bill. And don't say it's there to help the senior citizens like I keep telling Ozzy. They could pass a bill tomorrow to say everybody over 70 is exempt from school tax. They can do that. Did they ever do it? No. Did they have any intention to do it? No. This is this. I won't say what it is because, as you know, Scranton is in trouble. They would grab a great portion of that tax that, that we not put in the school. We know this. And we also know that, that the school tax will go up and up and up and up because there's no way to control it. The pensions are enormous. We're on the verge of collapse everywhere with the pensions because they never looked at it. There's no reason. I couldn't collect the pension until I was 55. Why the heck do all these other people get off getting 20 or 23? There's no reason for it. That's why the pensions are in trouble. You want to get full pension, you should work to put money into that pension system, not just take it out. And these people on council that went out and bought time so they get the pension. That was another act. And then you wonder why the pensions are in trouble. Then you have people saying you can have medical care for the life. You can't afford that today. They knew it. Why do you think the government says you can't write off your medical until it exceeds a certain amount? Because they knew what was going to happen. Nothing happens by chance. Understand that. There's no chance involved when it comes to mathematics. They know exactly what's happening. They know what's happening, how it's progressing, and they know what, how it's going to end up. I don't think you're going to do a darn thing for the city. I can sit there and say, you're not going to do nothing. We're going to end up paying higher taxes. There's no way out of it. You cannot borrow at 9% with 2.5 million, 22 million, and another, what, 24 or 25 million at 9%. Forget it. You're just not going to be able to do anything. And that's how it's going to end up. We're going to go through these four years where Billy is there, and very little is going to be changed because there's no way to change it. Nobody has the gumption to say, we got to attack the nonprofits. Not really attack them. They got to pay their fair share. And unless you're going out there and try to do that, you cannot change what's going to happen. Just look at the pat. Look at the pat was falling from uh, when Mr. McGough came on seven years ago or eight years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spraglia. Good evening, Council Marie Schumacher. I don't have a whole lot tonight because my computer and I are barely on speaking terms still, so uh, it take a little bit yet before I'm ready to go. But, uh, it, you know, it, it dawned on me when, uh, during the silent reflection today, that you should also be including those who were born this past week because we're leaving them a terrible world. We're leaving them a pile of debt and uh, and I think it's really sad so I would suggest you might want to start adding those who were born as well as those who leave us uh, the neighborhood summit that was held on Tuesday that really confused me I thought it was uh, to become it was a first step toward creating a council that would meet like quarterly of all of the associations as a matter of fact uh, about just about the time the meeting was start or about a half hour before the meeting was starting I had a call from the our neighborhood association president and I said well aren't you going to the 530 meeting or the whatever six and he said what meeting I said the one downtown he knew nothing about it and then I read the paper the next day and understood it was only for communities that have neighborhood watches. So I think a better communication of what that was, what the intent was, and if, if they're to be held in the future and possibly include all of them and let them not come if they don't care to. But, uh, and... Uh, 
down here. The, the half marathon, did I understand you correctly, Mr. McGough? The city of Scranton is getting the proceeds from the half marathon? Is getting? The proceeds? From the half marathon? I didn't say that. No. Oh, you said it was going to benefit the city, and I didn't know if you meant indirectly or I thought you meant into our treasury. No. No? no. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would also like to suggest an open caucus with, uh, with the city engineer uh, on the signalization project that seems to have gone astray. When it when it was announced, I thought it was going to have sensors that if nobody was coming the other way, the light would change and all those wonderful things. Instead, I find myself falling asleep at the corner of uh, South Washington and Lackawanna Avenue waiting for the light to change on Sunday mornings. Uh, so I think it would be nice to have the, the city engineer in and maybe even the, the person at PennDOT and maybe prior to that, ask what the community thinks of it and get questions to you and let us all hear what what happened um, and then is the east mountain fire station scheduled for receiving the needed capital improvements this calendar year i'm and sorry that, I, I said is the east mountain uh fire station scheduled to receive the capital improvements that are required there this year I do not know that. Who, who on the, whose bailiwick does that fall in on that council? That would, uh, Mr. Loscom is public safety, but um, as, as far as I know, I have not seen any plan for doing that, so. Okay. That, I don't know. Uh, that, yeah, speaking of that, uh, the questions, my questions from the 8th of February, how are we doing on those? Are they uh, getting anywhere close to completion? I'm working on them. I'm sorry. I, okay. There are one or two that okay. having Next difficulty. Week. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe you could uh, do it in installments then. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, the, again, on, uh, in addition to the others who have spoken on 5B tonight, I also have a question on that. I, I don't understand. First of all, did the RFP cover four years or was it for a single year? Did anybody look at the RFP for that I can that look in the, uh, the back up here. I'm not sure. But... I think it was four years. I'm almost positive. In the I could RFP? Be wrong. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it says, okay. And um, it, four years seems excessive to me. Uh, we, what does our human uh, res uh, resources person do? I thought the human resources was to deal with the labor and employment issues. I just... I think it's excessive. I'd like, I have more questions. I guess I'll bring them back next week. But I would like to give, if I may, uh, before leaving the podium, um, give Mr. Rogan a, a chance to change his answer to the question last week on whether or not Steamtown Partnership have paid the, have paid the installment that was due last year and the status of getting the loan information publicly still. No, as, as of now, it's, it's still not for public release. Okay, well, I guess I'll have to see what HUD has to say about that, and then I'll wish everybody happy shoveling this weekend. Is there anyone else who wishes to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Wexler. Uh, yes, Mr. McGough. Uh, I just want to touch a little bit on the neighborhood summit that was conducted the other day. Uh, these meetings actually have been going on probably for about a year. Um, it's kind of been a focus of the crime watch groups. Um, Chief Graziano has kind of been the lead person on this. Uh, neighborhood associations are invited to attend. Um, it's, it's open to any neighborhood group. Um, at the current point, some are more active than others, but it is held on a quarterly basis. Um, and I believe if you, uh, the dates will be posted 
uh, on, a, on a city site uh, through uh, Chief Graziano's uh, office. And everyone is invited to attend. Uh, the meeting that was held on Tuesday was kind of a different source. There was uh, several of the cabinet members uh, from the new administration were there. Um, they were open to any kind of question that they had. Um, the meeting was limited because there was only an hour of taping time reserved in the chambers here. Um, so that's why it was only about an hour long. Um, but there, there are going to be ones in the future, and the group is looking to expand, and it's open to all, all the neighborhoods. Um, I just want to touch on a couple of things that were mentioned tonight at the meeting. Um, I think the fact that the city council and the mayor are having open dialogue is a tremendous success. Um, in the past couple of years, it hasn't happened. And we're only in this for about eight weeks that we've been sworn into office. And the communication is flowing back and forth, information, ideas. And I know right now I'm, I'm frustrated too. We're not seeing a lot of progress. We don't have a lot of answers. I, I can't tell you where um, the settlement with the, with the unions are. If I, if I said I did, I had an answer to that, I would be a liar. And I, and I won't do that. Um, I know for myself that I am communi in communication with uh, Business Administrator Balzoni, uh, probably on an every other day basis. I'm in contact with the mayor. And the answers just aren't available yet. They're, they're just not. Uh, we're trying to get our financial house in order. Um, we're making some progress on that. And um, just to give out answers, I, I, I can't do that right now. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention, um, all the council members, we get correspondence through many different ways now. I get, I get calls, I get emails, I still get snail mail at my house. Um, and, I, and I try to respond to every, every question and every uh, issue that I have. But the one thing that I would request, if you're going to send information to us, please sign your name to the letter. Um, the reason being that is it's not because I, I want to know who you are. The reason why I would like you to sign your name is I, so I can get back to you. Um, I received a, a letter from a person who did not include their phone number with the letter. Um, so I was able to uh, look up their phone number and call them back to speak to them. Uh, if you send us a letter, uh, maybe I don't understand exactly what you're saying in the letter. I do need to, to speak to you sometimes. Uh, every letter that we get is looked at. It's not if it's not signed, it goes in a, a different pile. Um, some of the letters that we've gotten that aren't signed have a lot of legitimate issues to them. Uh, but it, just sign your name. I, I won't make it public. Uh, it, it, it'll stay with me. Uh, and it, it, it will make it easier for us to get um, responses back to you. Uh, that's it for now, Mr. McGuff. Thank you. Mr. Rogan? Yes, thank you. Um, first, just a housekeeping item. Um, I would like to make a motion to table item 6A. Second. Second. And, and as uh, Councilman McGough mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, there is going to be some legal um, language changes on that, and it will be coming back um, shortly from the law department. Anyone else on the question? All in favor of tabling, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, and so moved. Thank you. Um, just two items I, I want to talk about. Um, one is uh, Mr. Spragley they brought up some, some points about property tax reform and whether people believe it or not, property taxes is also included in somebody who rents. Um, when you're paying rent to a landlord, they're, they're gonna make a profit on it. Um, if they weren't, they wouldn't be in the landlord business. So by, by eliminating property taxes, um, I, I wouldn't say that renters would see a decrease in rent. Um, but, but you would think the increases wouldn't go up at the same rate as they are with, with the property taxes. Um, but one point that was brought up that is, I do agree with, um, it has to start with school districts. Um, the school district needs to stop spending so much money. Uh, if you look at the city's budget and the services you receive in the city compared to the school districts, you see that the vast majority of your tax dollars are, are going to the school district. And the wage tax that you pay at 3.4% doesn't all come to the city. 1% of that goes to the school district, approximately a third. Um, on the property tax end, um, the school district's taking the lion's share of your property taxes. Then the city and the county um, are, are the next two um, in proportion. And I, I know, unfortunately, the property tax bills aren't divided that way. When you get your bill, city, city wage tax, 3.4%. 
only 2.4% is actually going to the city of Scranton. And regarding the property taxes, it's split between, I believe, county and then city and school are together. And of that city and school portion, the city receives um, a much smaller portion than the school district does. Um, so, so that is a good point that the school districts do need to begin to save money um, every way they can. Um, but, but I do encourage everyone, supporters, detractors, and, and those who, um, who haven't made up their mind about property tax reform to come next week and, and listen to the panel. Um, and the information that they will provide and, and how, it will, how it will affect taxes in the state of Pennsylvania. It really is um, the biggest issue going on in the state right now. And a city like Scranton would be um, a prime example of folks that can really be helped um, by this bill passing with, with how high the prop school property taxes are and with the, the large population of senior citizens who own their homes. Um, they own their homes outright and they, writing that check it, every year is, is quite a burden. So it's definitely something that I, I can believe, um, I believe will help. Um, next, one other item, I did uh, meet with representatives from uh, PPNL. Um, they are reaching out to elected officials throughout the state to talk about some of their new plans regarding making um, electricity more reliable and try to cut down on outages and the length of the outages. And one thing they mentioned was that for residents in areas, especially with a lot of trees. If you notice a tree on your property that's hanging over um, power lines, um, you could call PPNL at the 1-800 number that's on your bill, and they will send a crew out to assess the situation. And if it is a danger of falling, they will remove that at their own cost. Um, they are getting away. They also relayed that they're getting away from, and I know you'll see it if you go down certain neighborhoods where you'll see a power line in a V basically cut into a tree to let the power line go through. They're getting away from that and trying to make it more visually um, appealing for the neighborhoods. So that's just one thing for um, residents who have large trees near their power lines to think about. Um, it's, it's free, it's no cost to you. And it would also save um, our, our Department of Public Works money for when there are storms and these trees um, would fall onto roads and, and our, our guys would have to come out on overtime to, to take care of that. Um, that is all I have for now. Um, I'll hold my other comments for those votes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Quinn for those documents. And just to let you know that I have been in uh, discussions with our business administrator, Mr. Bolzoni, uh, about the tax amnesty program. Uh, we both think that it's a good idea, uh, but we're, we're discussing the logistics of, of the whole thing. So, so that is in the works. Um, and thank you again for that. Uh, secondly, just want to follow up on what I spoke about last week. As everybody knows, or if you don't know, we're supposed to have another snowstorm Sunday into Monday. Um, I'm strongly recommending that the city create and implement a snow emergency plan of action. I think we, we are in desperate need of it. Um, I've reached out to the administration to have a meeting and discuss the plan. Um, and as I said, I think it's imperative that we move on this. Um, I would hope that the mayor, in the event that he does declare a snow emergency, number one, notifies the media and the public, and number two, does something about the downtown, either bans parking downtown during a snow emergency. Um, I think one of our options is to reach out to the parking authority to offer free parking or uh, parking at discounted rates to get the cars off the streets downtown um, and allow the DPW to get in and do their job without any trouble. I also uh, recommended last week that we take a look at what Pittsburgh did. Um, they created a winter weather emergency resource guide. It's accessible on their website. I think it's something that we should do. We should create and implement. Um, basically, they, it's a welcome from the mayor. They have four phases of winter weather emergency. Um, it basically shows you what the DPW does. If we get one to three inches of snow, here's how the city operates. I think this informs the public, lets them know what the plan is, and um, it, it makes things a lot easier. Um, so that's something that I am uh, recommending, and I hope Sunday um, the mayor does do that if we do declare a snow emergency. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very briefly, I, I would like to um, continue my response uh, as far as the uh, caucus is concerned. We, we, we as a council felt that it was in our best interest
to hold a, ca a caucus prior to every meeting. The purpose of the caucus is to share information among council members and to prepare us for that evening's meeting. Um, if, if there is an issue that we feel is important enough to hold a caucus in council chambers, we will do that as we are doing next week. But the, we feel that we've taken a step forward by having a, a caucus every week, whether it's of any importance. Uh, I think that for the public to come to most of the caucus, it's pretty boring uh, that all we do is discuss what's on the agenda and um, how we're going to proceed that night. Um, we are not trying to conduct any business surreptitiously. We are trying to help one another so that we can operate more efficiently. Um, and again, the public is invited to be part of the caucus, uh, to be there in attendance while we have that meeting. Uh, and they are at half an hour prior to meeting, so six o'clock prior to every meeting. Uh, just a the neighborhood summit meeting, uh, just to add to what Mr. Wexler um, said, that was not a meeting scheduled by council. I know we spoke in council about something of that nature. This was a meeting, this meeting was scheduled by the Crime Watch groups Co or- Council of Neighbors, I think is a- And we, we were, there were three of us in attendance, but it was not a meeting that we, as a council, schedule. Just so, uh, um, so we had nothing to do with announcing it or um, making it public to, or making it uh, known to the public or to the neighborhood associations. And also, uh, for information's sake, uh, also to add to what Mr. Wexler said, there are ongoing negotiations to deal with all of the financial issues that are facing the city. Um, some of these negotiations require uh, that meetings be held and, and things discussed that are not available right at this point in time to the public. Uh, some of these negotiations are sensitive, and uh, but I know that Mr. Wexler has been in contact with Mr. Bolzoni. I too have been in contact with them, have attended any number of meetings in which um, we've been told that these that I've been told that these uh, negotiations are ongoing and that they are looking for resolution to some of the financial issues that um, face the city. In, a, in particular, the payment of the um, arbitration awards. And also, in the past, it was asked about the uh, SAFER grant there was a meeting held on Wednesday, I believe, yesterday, that uh, with members of the fire department, the mayor's office, and also with council. And there are ongoing uh, efforts to pursue a renewal of the SAFER grant. That cannot be done until the application the actual application period is not until sometime in the summer, but the, there are efforts and to have that renewed, just to answer some 
questions that people had about the safer grant and that is all I have at this point in time thank you 5b for introduction a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials of the city of Scranton to enter into a professional services contract with the law firm of Abrahamson Conboy and Abrahamson PC for labor and employment legal services for a term of four years at this time I'll entertain a motion that item 5b be introduced into its proper committee so moved. second on the question Yes, Mr. McGough, uh, just to touch on uh, something that was mentioned from the podium. Uh, Mr. Abramson is not going to do personnel uh, matters. Uh, his, uh, this contract is for contractual matters uh, involving the city. Uh, in terms of um, the line item in the budget where this is coming from, it's actually uh, in the solicitor's um, budget. Um, there's a line item in the solicitor's budget for special services, and that's where this uh, funding for this contract will come from. Anyone else? Should also note that uh, the the firm of Abrahamson, Conaboy and Abrahamson was the low bidder of, I believe, seven uh, different law firms. They were the low bidder, and it is within the purview of the mayor, uh, the administration, to choose um, the service that they feel is best for the city and being the low bidder I believe that they've made a, a wise decision all in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye opposed ayes have it and so moved sixth order 6a has been tabled seventh order 7a for consideration by the committee on rules for adoption resolution number 28 2014 appointment of Emmanuel Johnson 1007 Scranton Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority. Mr. Johnson will be replacing Carol Oleski, whose term expired December 31, 2013. Mr. Johnson's term will expire December 31, 2018. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted and congratulate Mr. Johnson on his appointment to the Recreation Authority. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption. Resolution number 29, 2014, appointment of Timothy Perry, 2325 Bernie Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as a member of the board of the Scranton Redevelopment Authority. Mr. Perry will be replacing Peter Reby, whose term expired on February 4, 2010. Mr. Perry's term will expire on February 4, 2015. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted and also congratulate Mr. Perry on his appointment. Any other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for your participation.